Uh, I'm Mark LaFromboise, a head buyer at Politics and Pros. And I'm Lisa Muscatine. I'm one of the co-owners of Politics and Pros. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of our favorite nonfiction titles of 2016. For, for nonfiction, one of my uh, favorite books of the year is really one that I think is one of the most important books. It's called Blood at the Root by Patrick Phillips. Uh, it's a, a fascinating story of uh, written by a guy. He grew up in Forsyth County, Georgia. He discovers uh, growing up there that it's highly segregated. It sort of dawns on him. And then he traces back the history of this county and finds out that there was literally an ethnic racial cleansing that went on in the early part of the 20th century. And he goes back and he explores the dynamics and the phenomenon and how this county not only purged itself of non-white people, but also remained all white despite the civil rights movement and other uh, other reasons that you would think it would have become integrated. Um, it's an important book now as our country is dealing with renewed aspects of racial tension and uh, a book that all Americans should really read. Uh, ben McIntyre is one of the great uh, popular writers on World War II uh, that's writing right now. Um, he wrote Agent Zigzag and Operation Mincemeat, uh, two books that are hugely popular. And um, But he writes about little-known stories about World War II. Uh, in this one, it's a bit of a, a larger story. Um, he's not writing about one special case. He's writing about the history of the SAS, the Special Air Services. They were the commandos who went behind uh, enemy lines and really changed the course of the war by... Um, really uh, taking it to the enemy in, in Europe. Uh, but McIntyre, he tells great stories. Um, he tells you things you don't already know in a really, really engaging, entertaining way. Uh, we often are asked to recommend biographies and memoirs, and obviously there are many, many good ones. But for this year, uh, we were really excited about Lab Girl by Hope Jaren. She's a botanist. Um, I think she calls herself a geobotanist. And she has written a marvelous book that talks about her own career as a woman in the sciences, as somebody who's interested in a fairly obscure subject, and how it has impacted her in both her, her scholarly work but also in her, her social life and in other ways. It's a funny book. It's a charming book. It's a really important uh, look at women in the sciences. It's just a well done life story and an interesting life story. And even if you're not interested in botany, you will find this a phenomenal, phenomenal read. Uh, John Berger is just one of the smartest people and uh, one of the best writers around. And uh, this is his new book about art. Uh, it's not just a, a treatise on, on any one subject, it's uh, uh, stories, essays, poems, it's really just a collection and the thing that unifies all the pieces is that the subject matter is art. Uh, Berger himself is an artist, so he writes about the creative process of drawing and painting, but it's also his appreciations of other artists and other art forms. Um, so if there's somebody uh, on your gift list who is a uh, budding artist or a budding art historian, this is a perfect gift. And lastly, I, um, I'm, I keep uh, talking about books that I think are important to read, and this is another one. It's called Evicted by Matthew Desmond. Um, we've heard a lot in the last 18 months during the presidential campaign about income inequality and uh, the way that the gap between rich and poor. And this is probably the most powerful close-up examination of poverty and what its repercussions are that's been done in a long time. He's a sociologist. He went to Milwaukee. He spent time with a, a number of families living in poverty. And he really looks at not just the experiences of living in poverty, but all of the forces, economic and other otherwise, that come to bear on the families living in poverty, but also those who profit off of them, and why this dynamic is so hard to change. So once again, it's a very timely book and one we all need to pay attention to if we want to redress the tremendous income gap in America right now.